Hey, hey, everybody. It's me, Gamer Girl Grim. I'm probably going to post this on all my channels um, just because I feel like it's a consumer warning and I do like to put those on all, on all of my channels. Um, so we're going to go with this. Um, I actually did forget the pamphlet over there, so I'm going to grab that. So I was having trouble with migraines for the last three and a half years almost. Wow, that's a long time. Um, it was, it turned into a permanent migraine over an eight month period and it just slowly grew and grew and grew. And apparently I was having cluster migraines, silent migraines, and I was having not one or two, but multiple migraines at one time coming from different sections of my head. Um, after the Botox failed because I got the COVID shot, um, it's literally the only thing we changed on my medication was the COVID shot. So we, according to my doctor, she pretty much definitely knows that it's, that is what made the Botox ineffective in treating my migraines. That's for me and my body, not saying it's gonna happen for everybody. So I went and got a diath piercing because, or dayath piercing, whatever you wanna call it. Um, part of it was because I couldn't take it anymore. Um, honestly, I had thought about getting hit by a bus or a semi, because I know a semi would definitely take me out. Uh, not that I was suicidal, it was just that I was in so much pain that those thoughts would pop in my head, you know, just randomly. It wasn't like I was thinking about it and planning it or anything. It would just say, hey, go get hit by, if your head gets hit by a semi, the pain will stop. That's what popped into my head, you know, and things like that are why it drove me totally to the edge and nobody could understand why I wasn't functioning and doing things and you know doing this and that and why why did I go get my forklift license and then not use it um, besides having a broken ankle and now needing surgery for said ankle um my I can drive a little bit but I can't drive a lot uh and it's mostly because of the braking like me braking. So if I can't stop a, tr a car, I'm definitely not going to be able to stop a forklift, okay? Stopping a forklift is a harder brake, okay? If I can't drive a car a lot and brake a lot, then I definitely can't do a forklift, okay? Because one day my leg is just gonna be like, oh, oops, and it's that muscle will just give out and it'll be like, oh, you can't break. And I'll be on a forklift with a load in a dangerous position. And somebody or something is going to get run over or hurt because I can't break because my leg isn't working properly. So back onto the subject of my diet piercings. Um, so I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's inside my ear, that little hoop thing. And I got another one done on my right ear. So the one on my right ear, um, I got in Miami. And I'll tell you multiple reasons why to go to this place. If you have a chance to get a piercing and you go to Florida a lot or go to Miami a lot or every once in a while even, save your time like don't get that piercing just by anybody get it by somebody that's a professional so this guy works at new age body piercing he does literally everything and he's so professional that i asked him why the needle was smaller um, the needle that he was using, was about to use was smaller. Um, I asked him about what the girl said, you know, when he took a look at my other ear because I was having issues with it. Um, it was hurting me. It was painful. 
And I, I said, well, she said it's supposed to be painful. She said, I'm sorry for using this word. I know it grosses America out that there's going to be yellow pus. She said, just get ready for a lot of that. And I was just like, this is not what I read on the internet at all. And this sounds weird, but okay, we'll just go with it because my headache at that point was just like, I mean, they were talking about drilling into my head. So I'd rather get a piercing than drill into my head, right? So this is what she hooked me up with, and I'm gonna get real close with it. So this is an earring that has a hinge on it, and it it opens and closes. Let me take it out, actually, because I'm gonna wear it on one of my other piercings anyway. So I wanna show, this is what it is, and it hinges. It literally goes up and down. This is not the piercing you want for the diath piercing. Okay, that is not the type of earring that you want. The one that swings closed and open, you don't want that one. Um, you want the other kind uh, that's actually in my ear. So if you see one and it has a ball on it, then, you know, like mine, then that's most likely the correct type of earring. This earring happened to be, um, she did it with, and this is from whatever in South Carolina. Um, so I asked the guy, why, why would she use such a big needle and why would she cause so much damage and bleeding and everything else? And he said, most likely it's that she's, you know, newer to piercing or that's how she learned it. And she just didn't, you know, she didn't really know that she was doing something wrong. Um, that she did a bigger needle to compensate for her, you know, being new, I guess, and needing to get the, the piercing, the, the, what am I trying to say? The earring into the pierce, into the piercing correctly. So she chose a bigger needle thinking that, oh, okay, this will give me more room and more space. And what it ended up doing is making me bleed like a stuck pig. And let me tell you, that didn't stop for a while. Um, it, it took a very long time. Like she, she put cotton all up in there and like I left with it in my ear I sat with it in my ear like all day and all night I changed it out you know of course but I had to sit there because it was still bleeding and um I contacted some people so they gave me this really awesome recipe which I might you know what I'll share it um so it's what you do is you take um a teaspoon of coconut oil Okay, you put five drops of five to eight drops of eucalyptus oil and five to eight drops of peppermint oil or not, not peppermint. I'm sorry. No, not peppermint. Um, tea tree oil. And you put that and you, you, you heat the coconut oil up and you put it, the oils in, you mix it up real good and it'll solidify off cap. Thank you. That looked really awkward. Um, that's my dad, Scott. He's been up my butt. So that will solidify into a functioning salve for your ears. Do not use Q-tips, okay? Do not use Q-tips. So because she gave me a printout of the care instructions, which were, I'm not going to say that they were wrong, but they weren't spot on so i'm gonna read what his are so this has literally tips for every single kind of piercing that you could get like this is everything covers everything um ooh, i kind of like that one i might get that one next time um so okay so all piercings can become inflamed all piercings can become red, crusty, or become infected. So take care with your new piercing. All, peri all piercings, sorry, all piercings carry the risk of an allergic reaction 
and some piercings have a risk of rejection. All piercings should be cleaned using clean hands. Okay, so this is this is basic piercings. Um, saline solution sprays can be used to rinse the area or soak the piercing briefly in order to aid in cleaning. Spray or soak the affected area. Clean away any debris on the piercing jewelry and dry the area. And then for any questions, you can call him He's or text him day, night, whatever. He doesn't care. He has an awesome wife that apparently is into knitting and crocheting and spinning and all that stuff. So he's going to be getting alpacas soon. And I told him I'll be his first customer for some of that, that fine uh, fur of theirs. So this has oral piercings. Um, never touch your piercings with dirty hands. Of course, you know, make sure to clean your hands before touching. Do not, with these diac piercings, do not spin them. Do not rotate them. Do not move them in any kind of way until they are fully healed. And yes, they can take anywhere from, depending on your speed of healing your body, Mine would probably be four months, honestly, because my body heals very quickly. Um, but it's four months to a year. And that's with some people, it, it can take up to a year. Um, so I'm not gonna read that one. Okay, avoid contact with chemi chemicals and irritants. This includes such first age products as alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, antibacterial sprays and ointments, as well as perfumes, lotions, body sprays, haircuts, oh, sorry, hairspray, anti-acne creams, medicated creams, makeup, etc. So on a piercing, never use Bactine, hydrogen peroxide, alcohol, neosporin any petroleum thing is going to attract dirt okay and petroleum based is neosporin that's why i have been using the coconut oil mix um and the tea tree oil and the eucalyptus has have antibacterial stuff you know it's an it's a more natural way of doing it and i asked him about that um He didn't say it was bad, so um, he just said, I don't think he's heard of it, which was weird. Um, but then again, it is my own concoction, so that might be why he hasn't heard of it. Uh, so after 24 hours, most piercings should be cleaned a maximum of two times a day. Simplest options are mild liquid soap or the use of sterile saline rinses, which I'm going to stick with saline. Soap and water can be used to clean the external surfaces by gently cleaning the piercing and surrounding area with mild color and fragrance-free soap, which I'm not going to do. I'm just going to be doing what I've been doing is um, I've had a, I take a cup and I put salt in it and I put water in it and I make a, and I mix it up and I take my shower. I let the hot um, water run over it. Well, not hot, hot, but hot enough and let it run over it to clean it all out, all the gook out, whatever is going on. And then at the end of my shower, I pour the salt water all over it. And that seems to be helping actually a lot. So the salt water is like drying and cleaning the area to the point where it's been pretty good. Um, he was actually surprised with the way that my piercing was done. Um, and he said, you know, I can't leave you with this earring that's in there. That's not supposed to be in there. He's like, I'll just give you a deal. And, you know, I'd rather you leave here with two good earrings that are not going to hurt you and not going to cause a problem later than to stick you with anything like, you know, to leave me with the earring that she put in there. So for the people that are running whatever, um, the girl that, there's only one girl that does the die-off piercings. So I gave them a good review. 
initially because I didn't, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was supposed to be getting. Um, and after doing some research and really feeling the pain, yeah, the migraines were gone ish on this side of my body. It was like half of them were gone. So I actually am going to, um, redo my, my initial review because I thought she did a great job but really when I looked at what he did he just went Doop, and like put it in small needle no pain I wasn't bleeding everywhere I didn't have to deal with you know and he redid this one and I didn't even feel it um so yeah I'll give her a good review because she knows how to do it but she really needs to hone her skills on um, you know, making the needles that she uses smaller, causing less trauma to the area, which I had a lot of trauma to my area. Um, so he gave me tips and tricks on how to deal with that. Um, so your diaph piercing, you definitely want to do that. And I asked her specifically, what would I need to do to get a bar that comes from my earlobe well, from the outside of my earlobe all the way through to the diaph piercing. And she said, oh, no, don't worry. This will do it. We'll do this one first, and then we add the other one. And he said, no, that's not how you do it. You're supposed to map out if you want that done and somebody asks you that they want that, tells you that they want that done, you, which makes more sense, you have to be able to tell where all three piercings are going to go and then do the diaph piercing because you have to know what angle to do it at. So this ear is good to go on that. This one, not so much. Live and learn, people. So whatever tattoo piercing you will get, I would, I would rate you a three out of five. This guy at um, New Age Body Piercing, I would give a seven out of five because he seemed to really care. He wouldn't let me leave with that piercing in there. Um, it was causing real problems. Um, I could tell once he removed it and put the new one in, it was a complete difference. It's not pinching and hurting me anymore. And there's not the, the, there's no pus. There's not anymore. Um, I also had, have a nickel allergy. So I really was never able to wear silver or anything as a kid and his earrings are allergy free, hers aren't. So live and learn, that is my review, that's my status. So I would say, hey, you know, people at whatever, maybe practice more on an inanimate object or whatever to get it to where you can feel comfortable using that smaller gauge because it really makes all the difference. Coming from somebody who has had it both ways, it made, all the difference that he used a smaller needle. Seriously. Um, this one I have to wait for the trauma and swelling to go down. This one doesn't have any trauma or swelling. Like, it's total difference. And I've waited a full 24 hours to see if something would kick in. And honestly, this one's doing better since he put the new piercing in or the new earring or whatever. Um, he was nice enough to clean the area before he did so as well, um, to make sure that it was, you know, doing okay. Um, gave me a full checkup and in seven days I send him a picture of both ears and he's going to evaluate me that way since I'm leaving town. And then 30 days from now, he's going to evaluate again. So he really wants to keep in touch and make sure that his customers are okay. This girl kind of like when I called back to tell her, oh, hey, this is how long it takes for the migraines to go away. And you told me that you wanted me to call you. She kind of acted like, ah, I didn't really, but okay. And I just felt unconfident. Let's, let's say that. So hopefully everyone has a beautiful day and live and learn. And if you think that your piercer is maybe using a 14 gauge and you can look it up what a 14 gauge needle looks like, Okay, compared to a smaller gauge, 
don't let them don't let them rip a hole in you dude do not let them use a bigger thing on your ear just because they say they that's what is needed look at the needle i looked at the needle um but i didn't know you know I, it's a different part of my ear that i've never gotten pierced so i didn't know any better once i looked at the needle he was using i was like well what why are you using that isn't it too small because <laughs> they're freaking out and he's like no who used a bigger needle on you and I told him and he said, um, that explains a lot. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. That's my video. Um, whatever. I hope that you will, if you see this, maybe you'll like think twice and maybe try to try to get that gauge down and try to nail it, uh, next time. I know a lot of people use them for piercings. That specific piercing is a very, if you're looking for, for it to get rid of migraines, it's a very serious thing to the migraine sufferer. So for you to be messing up is not okay. Um, you gotta use, you gotta use a smaller needle. It's, it's, and no hinge, no hinges on the um, piercings. Because when I first went in there, I thought I was gonna get a bar. Like I didn't know I was gonna get a, I would have never agreed to a hinge, you know, but, um, I didn't know it was a hinge until I went to the second guy and he said, this is a hinge. And I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a hinge that she put in there. It's like, that's not the earring I purchased. That's weird. All right. I'll let you guys go. Um, but yeah, so there's whatever in South Carolina and they may or may not be good for pe for piercings and whatever, but I wouldn't go there again for a dieth if I ever needed a dieth ever again. I would um, actually wait and go to New Age Body Piercing. And I actually did talk to him about my cheek piercing and a couple other ones that I want. Uh, so... He said that if I came back um, to town and I got any more piercings, he'd throw in a nose ring because I keep telling, I, I was telling him how I keep losing nose rings. So, I mean, he's a great guy. I would support him. Small business and all. There's a tattoo place right next to, next door to them. They have like an 80 or $90 limit, hard, like hard limit. So like all I wanted was like a beauty mark, but since it's that much money anyways, I might as well get the girl on my back fixed or my, you know, my snake girl, my snake thing fixed. I think it's going to be this one. It's faded a lot. So I will see you next time and please comment. Um, if anybody wants me to do any reviews on anything specific or any other random videos, let me know. <laughs> Always open to suggestions.